Hello everyone, my name is Amber. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Amber Reads Romance. Today, I'm so excited to be doing this video. Um, this is one of my 2023 wrapped kind of videos. I am gonna be going over my top 10 romances from 2023, but I'm also gonna be going over all my six star reads. So obviously my top 10 is gonna include my six stars. So I did have a lot of six star reads from 2023. So I had about 21. So it was really hard to narrow my top 10, but I think I did okay. It was tough, you guys. But um, I also want to go over my other six star reads. I'll probably go more depth into my top 10 and then kind of briefly go over the other six star reads too. Um, I didn't rank the other ones. They're no particular order, but I did rank my top 10 for you guys. So um, we need to dive right in because that's 21 books I need to go into and we know how I ramble. So let's go ahead and dive right into my all my six stars and my top 10 of 2023. Okay, guys, so basically I do six star reads. Um, I kind of got that idea from Jen from the Book Refuge after watching her start that. It just seemed like a good idea because I also give a lot of five stars. I'm pretty generous depending on my enjoyment level out of a, out of a book. So it's a good way to figure out which of those five stars are just a little bit more. Um, instead of going over, like, I think I had like over a hundred five star reads. So um, I had a lot of five stars. So it's good to just kind of be able to tell which books are that extra something. These are books that usually make me cry, even though I say, oh, I never cry. I seem to cry a lot this year during these six star reads. So I don't know if I can say that anymore, but <laughs> these are just that extra couple that they have a beautiful romance. There's more of a deeper connection. Um, it moved me in a deep way. I cried. Um, the guy might be like book boyfriend or their top, you know, the best couple. Um, the story was there. So it's just a little extra. It's a little more than just a five star. So um, I had about 21 six star reads for 2023, which was amazing. Um, I think I had such a great year and this is my first year on booktube and it's just been really fun. So um, thank you guys so much. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe to this video. I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, but right now we're just gonna dive into the um, other six star books that I had. I won't go too in depth on them, but and then we'll get to our top 10 and I will kind of rank them 10 to number one. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I've already talked and rambled too long on these intros. So a six star read, which I can't believe I just now read this, was Dreaming of You by Lisa Kleepas. Um, Lisa Kleepas is like my favorite historical romance author. And I had heard forever about Derek Craven. Um, he is one of like the most hyped like historical romance heroes. And he's a pretty damaged, grumpy, um, angry kind of hero. You know, he runs, he was, I think his mother like left him in like a sewage pipe or something like that. I can't remember you guys. It's been a while. But he's, and he's basically a self-made man who's made this gambling den. He's like a huge success. And then we have our heroine in this. I believe it's Sarah. And she is actually an author, which I thought was really cool. And she is writing about like the women on the streets and people in these gambling dens. And so she wants to interview, she helps save his life funnily enough. And she actually wants access to his club so she can start interviewing the real like women who are like prostituting themselves and all that kind of stuff for her story. And then they just fall in love with each other. It's such a good classic historical romance. Derek Craven is so broody and grumpy and just yummy. I loved him so much. Oops. 
Okay, another six star that I had was Tied by Carrie Ann Cole. Um, I don't know why it took forever. I love Torn so much. It's another one of my favorite reads, favorite age gap taboo of all time. And Tied is the second book to that. And this is actually, a, you can read it as a standalone, but it is such an emotional read because um, our hero is actually like severely burned and scarred and very damaged. And he lives like kind of like a hermit in the middle of nowhere um, because of a tragic thing that happened um, to him when he was younger and he happens to come across our heroine who um, was basically kidnapped at a young age and as punishment the guy would like put her down in like this hole in the ground in the middle of nowhere and leave her there and so he comes across her and saves her and kills the guy and then now she has like kind of like this trauma bond to him and she wants to get to know him and you know she's has a horrible, like a really frustrating home life because the parents aren't even like getting what she went through and just kind of want to push it under the rug and aren't really supportive of her. They like actually put her in like kind of like a psychiatric almost facility to help her readjust to life because she was there for so many years. And so they just have like their two damaged souls like finding each other. And it's just so beautiful. Like it was really moved me. Then another historical romance is the first book that I've ever read by this author and I became hooked after this. And that is A Matter of Temptation by Stacey Reed. Um, thank you to Jen from the Book Refuge because I asked her what book was best to start with with Stacey and she said she loved this. And it was so unique. I loved it so much. It almost felt like the hero was almost neurodivergent. He was just such a unique character. Um, we have uh, the Simon, the Earl of Creswick. And then we have Mina in this. And she, it has such a cool setup where her brother was like, I think cheating in a game or accused him of cheating. And so he has to go to a duel with Simon and she knows her brother is not going to win that duel. He's going to die. And so she goes in his stead and dresses like a guy and everything. And Simon figures it out, but he's so intrigued by her. And so he basically offers her a job because they're really not doing well money wise. And so she gets to take the job kind of like as like his assistant. And he is so intrigued by her mind. Um, he's not really into romance or woman. He doesn't really feel a need to. His mother's trying to get him to marry somebody. And he's like, just pick out my wife. I don't care. Um, but they start working together. And he just is like so into her. And it's like almost like he falls for her mind first. And I just loved it. Like he's so like supportive. And I don't know. He was swoony. I loved this romance so much. I'd never read a historical romance like it. Another historical romance that I have um, was this year I discovered Joanna Shoup and the Duke Gets Even was absolutely amazing. It's the last book in the Fifth Avenue Rebels, I think it is. Yes, the F Fifth Avenue Rebels. Um, and this is between, I believe, Duke Lockwood and Nellie. And you kind of were like seeing the Duke and Nellie throughout the previous book. So I do recommend reading it in order because... The Duke, this poor Duke has been trying to be wed to somebody in the first book. Didn't pan out for him. He's looking for an American heiress. He's a Duke. And, you know, a lot of times the Dukedoms are, like, not in good financial straits. And so he needs an heiress. And so he's there still looking. And things just aren't working for him. And the very, like, beginning of this book, you go back to the original party where they met. And they had, like, met skinny dipping in, like, the lake. And they were almost like going to have like kind of like a rendezvous and he wanted to like her to come back with him, but she couldn't. It was a big house party. And um, then she, the next day she finds out he's the Duke that's supposed to marry her best friend. And so she's pissed. So that was from the first book, that heroine that married the, uh, didn't end up marrying him. And so this is later, you know, after he's tried to get another wife and he's just trying to woo women and find somebody. And he's just so drawn to Nellie. She's this free wild spirit that doesn't want to get married um and I loved her family is like some of her families in the Irish mafia and it was just like kind of cool um and they just have insane chemistry and she doesn't want to leave and go to like England and all that kind of stuff 
Um, but I loved it so much. Like they were just so perfect together and he was all straight. He would seem so straight laced and buttoned up, but he was pretty kinky and it was just fantastic. I love Joanna Shoup and I'm a big fan this year. Then I had Mercy from Sarah Kate. Um, this was the final book in her Salacious Clay, uh, Players Club series. And I loved Praise because Praise made me realize I love Praise. I love Praise. Don't give me decoration. Only the Praise. But this one was the only one I gave six stars because I loved it. Um, because this is, the hero is actually the... Because <laughs> in, in Praise, if you don't know already, I'm sure you do. But he was the boyfriend of the heroine from that. And she falls for his dad, Emerson. So um, I think it was Emerson. I might have the name wrong. Sorry, you guys. It's been a while. Um, but he was kind of a punk in that book. He was a spoiled little brat. And you kind of were like, this guy's an idiot. Um, and so he has some major growing up to do. And in this, it's kind of a dad's best friend romance. But it's a woman. And he is actually kind of paired up. There's a test that you can do through their Salacious Players Club app. And it's like figures out what your kink is and matches you with somebody that matches that kink. And he ends up getting a submissive, which he thinks is like wrong. There's no freaking way. And then um, we have the heroine. Did I write her name down? Maggie. She is his dad's best friend. Um, she helps run the business. And she's been so business focused and not really going after what she wants. And she is um, tested to be a dom. And so they match together and they kind of find out by meeting up and they're just, she's just like, we can't do this. Um, but then they end up agreeing to kind of test it out and test the waters. And he is, realizes he's kind of like a brat and he needs to get punished. And I just love their dynamic and he has such a good redemption arc and he just falls so hard for Maggie. I don't know why. I just loved that romance. Okay, I need to hurry it up because this is taking a while already. Um, but then I have Real Like Daydreams by Jay Wolf. It's Julia Wolf, but she wrote this other series as Jay Wolf. And um, this was between Julian and Sarah. Sarah, I think. Yeah. And I really loved this one because Julian actually was attacked. He actually saved his friend from being attacked. And so he, you know, was this gorgeous, you know, athletic, fun like very sunshiny personality in the other books, but now he's very depressed, had thoughts of suicide. Um, he's severely scarred and he has to go to physical therapy and his physical therapy is like, he doesn't have enough money for it. And he just has so much going on. Um, and he's very like a different person and depressed. And Sarah is basically, they kind of had a run in at a party and he like, she didn't know who he was cause it was dark. But she ended up have, getting in this kind of almost texting friendship with him that, that she didn't really know who he was. She was with a boyfriend at the time. And he, like, helps her through a breakup. and But she doesn't know who he really is. And it ends up being Julian. And, like, she needs to do, like, kind of like a fake dating thing to win a competition. Like, they said for her to, like, get him to fall for her. And so she tries to, like, build this relationship with him and do like a fake dating with him and so it kind of has that secret identity fake dating all of that but it was very emotional because it deals with a lot of darker issues and I just really loved it it was very emotional and I loved Julian so much and seeing him like kind of ha become okay with his situation and just fall head over heels in love with her so I really loved it then this next book, I can't really say too much about because it's a lot of mystery, but I read The Spy by Sophie Lark. Um, I had put this off forever because it was like basically the last book in the Kingmaker series. There's the Savage one, but I don't even know if I want to read that. Um, but this is kind of like a hidden identity. You didn't know who the spy was, um, the whole time. This is basically, um, a, a, kind of like a Hogwarts school for mafia kids. And so it's pretty dangerous, but this person has basically been at the school. They're the spy and they are 
planning revenge against something that happened to their family. And then it's also their romance and it ties in other books of Sophie's. So it's a lot of like stuff all coming together in this one book. So honestly, I can't really say anything because it'll give it away and you have to read things in a specific order and all of that. But all of those like little threads she gave you throughout the books all come together in this in such a really intelligent and cool way that I ended up giving this six stars because I just loved it. Okay, then I won't talk too deep on these, but basically both um, The Children of Fallen Gods and Mother of Death and Dawn. These are book two and book three of this amazing fantasy series by Chris of Broadbent. I want to read more Chris of Broadbent this year, but this is Tisana and Max, and this is a big fantasy romance. Um, and it's, you know, she was like a slave and she's trying to free other slaves, but there, there's so much to it. I can't even go into it, but her and Max, they just have such a beautiful relationship. And the second book like totally they had a third POV that I did not even get who that was the entire time so when it revealed it I was like oh my god it was next level amazing reveals um so much goes on such high stakes for this couple and it is just so well done I really want to buy the physical copies of these books because they're very beautiful too so if you haven't read the at that I would highly recommend it as a good fantasy romance series then I have Souls Unfractured by Tilly Cole. Um, I can't remember which book number this is um, in the Hades Hangman series, but this is between Flame and Maddie. And this is another, you can tell I love the romances of like damaged people coming together and falling in love because this is severely dark. This is a very dark romance, so check your triggers because Flame was basically abused by his father, sexually abused. Um, you know, he would basically cut himself while his father would abuse him. So he thought he has to like cut himself to get off. He has a lot of stuff going on. He doesn't like being touched by anybody. And then of course you have this where they're saving these women from this horrible cult. So, um, I believe, is it Maddie? Yeah. Maddie was severely abused and these women were sexually abused from a younger age and so she doesn't really want to touch anybody but she's so drawn to flame and like she can touch him and he's okay and so it's this beautiful story of them coming together and him like being able to let her touch him and then when they make love for the first time it's one of the most beautiful scenes I was like crying it was so beautiful because there's so much communication and him not thinking like I have to cut myself to be able to get off and she's like I can't have violence included in our sex life it's just beautiful you guys I don't know this this series is phenomenal so um again talking too much about these books Okay, and then um, the other one that I have is Grim and Barrett by Juliet Cross. Um, this series, the Stay of Spell series, has been fantastic. This is the final book in the series, um, and I loved it so much. It has no angst because throughout the books, we've been waiting for Henry and Clara to be together. So I didn't care that there was no angst because we've been dying for them to be together. And Clara is just this sunshine, beautiful witch. And Henry is this badass, powerful Grimm. And he's basically been fighting his feelings for her, thinks she's not into him. Even though she's been hinting and coming on to him and flirting with him, he never makes the move. So she's done. She wants him and she's going to go after him. And there's just so many swoon-worthy scenes in this. And I just love them as a couple. And it's the final book. So like the epilogues were just so beautiful, of like seeing all the previous couples. So it was just such a feel-good like happy time like I absolutely loved it so much it was like my favorite so absolutely love that okay guys so now we get to my top 10 romances of 2023 um so I'm gonna go from 10 to 1 this was really hard to narrow it to these ones but this is what we got so number 10 is a book that may not be everybody's most amazing book they've ever read but this was this author's first book, and I just think it's so unique and amazing, and it blew me away. 
and I've talked about it many times on my channel, and that is Salt Eater by Lily Mayne. This was such a moving book. I, I loved it. It was such a cool monster male male romance. Um, I got so turned on reading this book, you guys. Like the male male sex in this was so unique because he's a monster. He's got some different human anatomy going on. And I just loved it. I loved Wynn and Danny so much. There's a rift that opens up and monsters have come through into our world. And so it's a post-apocalyptic kind of setup here. You've got the like the midland or inland areas are all full of monsters. They don't like to go near the oceans. And so you got like military and like encampments out, you know, in there. And um, Danny basically joined the military because he had nowhere else to go after his mom died, even though he's not good in the military. And the military is trying to capture Wynn, who is a soul eater, because he has this mission that nobody understands what he's doing. He randomly comes and he just kills at random. And so they try to capture him. And Danny is in that, like, he's basically set with all these soldiers to kind of be, like, a setup for him. And then, like, they're just going to die. And then the troops will come in and capture Wynn. Um, so Wynn is, like, killing all these soldiers next to Danny, but he doesn't kill Danny. And then Danny passes out. Well, they did catch Wynn. Maybe he let them catch him. And um, he's being held in this facility where all these monsters are being, like, kind of tortured and tested on. And it's just horrible. And he will only speak to Danny. And so eventually he escapes and frees the other monsters. And then basically gives Danny the choice, like, you can go back or, you know, go on your own or you can come with me. And so they go on this road trip for the Soul Eater's mission. And his mission is very cool and interesting. And Danny's very attracted to Wynn. And Wynn looks like this. He's basically got these horns, but he's got like, a. it looks black where he holds this uh, kind of cape thing over his face. And he is just like very mysterious. He won't put down his cowl. But Danny is just really attracted to him. And so they start to kind of have a sexual relationship. And Wynn is just so possessive and will do anything. Touch her or touch him <laughs> and you die energy. I love them so much. And I think the world building in this series is really unique. I loved it. And I was just so impressed that this was their first book. Like it was so good. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, so the next one that I have is The Right Move by Liz Tom Ford. This is the second book. I think it's in her Windy City series. I'm not sure. But um, this is Ryan Shea and Indy. And this is a fake dating. He's a pro NBA basketball player. He's very focused on his career. He doesn't want a relationship. Um, Indy had just caught her long time, like from high school boyfriend cheating on her. And so she has nowhere to go. Um, she was best friends with his sister from the first book. And they were like a stewardess for, you know, a flight attendant for like the hockey team in the first book. And so her sister basically talks her brother into letting Indy stay with him. And so it's a very forced proximity, kind of grumpy sunshine. Um, and they decide to fake date because Ryan Shea is just so focused on his career. Um, but he doesn't have like that family man or dedication like with the team. Um, that the owner wants and so the but the owner will respect him more if he's like more settled and has a relationship so he starts a fake dating thing with Indy and she kind of needs it because all her friends are still best friends with like her ex-boyfriend they're trying to get them back together and so they start a fake dating thing the reason this is so amazing is Ryan Shea is on my book boyfriend list top 10 book boyfriends and he just does something where it's like he does it through actions, shows how much he cares for her. He does little acts of sweetness, of thinking about her. He's so swoon worthy. He takes care of her. Like he's just such an amazing man and and he's sexy too. So um, it was such an amazing book. Love Ryan Shea. Okay, so then I have a new to be author that I fell in love with this year. And um, they're on this list twice. 
but I have His Pretty Little Burden by Nikki Harris. Um, so this one is between Clay and Fawn. Honestly, this is a duet. So there's another book after this, but the first book I gave six stars because it just blew me away. I loved it so much. It's in a huge age gap. Um, and this is Mafia series. This is the Kids of the District series. And this is book number four. And then the other part of the duet is five. And this is between Clay and Fawn. And he is actually kind of like the serious businessman mafia, kind of head of the mafia. Um, and hit, there's a big enemy um, that we've dealt with for the previous books that he's kind of taken over, but that guy's in hiding. And this is his daughter. She was never like his legitimate daughter or whatever. She didn't really know about him till later, but she's in pregnant. She's in a dire situation. So she goes to her father's house to try and get help not knowing that her father's not there anymore, but Clay is. And he finds out she's his daughter and he basically keeps her there. So she's pregnant um, with another man's baby, but that guy had passed away and there are some tragic ways how she got pregnant. She was drugged and she thinks he protected her from getting assaulted, but it's pretty bad what happened to her. And so there is some major dark stuff in this and content warnings. So just check your triggers because there is a sexual assault and drugging and all of that. Um, but Clay finds out what happens to her and he wants to like, he's infuriated. He falls for her. She, he keeps, call, he calls her his little deer. He like wants to take care of her. And it's so, it's just this beautiful romance. <laughs> I don't know why I was just so moved when you find out what happened to her and it was like on camera and all you it was just so traumatic and I don't know I hadn't read anything like it it's the perfect age gap I loved Clay so much and it was just such a fun time okay so um then I have another dark romance I read a lot of dark romance guys <laughs> so that's gonna be a lot on this list but I have dark notes by Pam Godwin I can't believe I haven't read this book before this year, but the, I feel like Pam Godwin is meant for me. <laughs> like her writing is so beautiful and poetic and moving, but she writes about dark subject matter. And this is a very dark book, but it's moving and beautiful and brought me to tears. And this is a teacher-student BDSM is healing type of romance. Um, our heroine has horrible home life where she is sexually assaulted by her brother's best friend badly like through the butt too and she has to kind of like sell herself to kind of students at school because her mom doesn't work once her dad died everything in her life kind of crashed her dad was you know this amazing pianist and you know he kind of gave up on doing that but he wanted to put he put a lot of money that the family kind of might have needed into a special school for her because she's an amazing pianist too. And he wants her to go after her passion. And so her mom and brother are very mean to her and rude to her because of that. Um, so she goes to the special school. And then um, Emmerich is, ends up being the new piano teacher. And he is just drawn to her. And when he finds out what's what she's going through in her home life and how she's having to sell herself just to have money to get by, um, he loses it and wants to take care of her. He is actually at that school because he kind of had a scandal um, with a BDSM relationship. Um, but so he ends up kind of going in this secret relationship with her and starts using BDSM. But it's used to like show her she has a voice and she's in charge and she has like all the power in the situation. And it's just really beautiful. Um, just make sure you check your triggers because there is animal death on here that freaking killed me. But this is such a beautiful student teacher, dark romance, BDSM, and it's beauty, beautiful. Like it's just beautiful. So I absolutely love this. Oh, I haven't been giving you numbers, but that was number uh, seven. 
So number six, I don't have a physical copy yet, but I'm hoping I'm going to be getting it soon because I'm on Jen's annotation, like on her Patreon, and she's doing this book for me because it was my favorite book that I just read. And that is P.S. You're Intolerable by Julia Wolf. And this was amazing. Elliot has made his way to my book boyfriend list. This is about a, it's a workplace, billionaire, grumpy sunshine. He's very stoic, very like, she like kind of calls him, he's like a robot. She's his personal assistant, but she's actually pregnant, um, kind of with her partner's like a best friend's kid. Um, so they weren't together, but they were doing like a home remodel and living together and about to have a baby. And then he kind of ups and abandons her. And so she works for Elliot and she he didn't even notice she was pregnant for a while. But then when he does, he does all these like little sweet things. And when she goes on maternity leave with the baby, he ends up showing up at her house for some papers. And he sees that she's living in the in this horrible conditions with her baby from the home remodel. And he basically tells her, you're coming with me, you're living with me. And so it is the most swoon worthy hero who takes care of her, who'll like hold her baby so that she could actually eat or get some rest. Like he totally takes care of her and baby Joey and it is just the sweetest. I realized I have a thing for a man taking care of a woman that's pregnant with somebody else's kid and like loving that kid like his own. And Elliot just, steps up to the plate and shows her how worthy she is and how she should be treated. And I just freaking loved it. If you haven't read this book yet, get out there and read it now. It's phenomenal. It's my favorite Julia Wolf book and I absolutely loved it. Okay, so the next one that I have is another Pam Godwin and that is Sea of Ruin. This was amazing. I literally cried and I mean bawled my eyes out within like the first 30 pages of this book. I was bawling. This is such a unique romance. I've never read anything like it. It is a historical romance. It's a pirate romance. We have Bennett. She is a female pirate. She's a freaking badass. She's one of the most badass heroines I've ever read. And she has basically been kind of on the run from her husband, Priest. Um, she feels like he was cheating on her, found like a love letter to somebody else, and she basically left him. He's trying to chase her down because there's more to that story, and he still loves her, and he's devoted to her. Um, he finally catches up to her. He's, she's on his ship. I mean, she, he's on her ship, and she, they basically get chased down by Ashley Cutler, and he is a pirate hunter. And so she kind of gives herself up to save them. And so Priest doesn't get taken. And she's basically, it's a captor captive. She's going to be held by him. He actually keeps her in his room because she almost got raped by like the other uh, pirates on the ship. And so it starts this really dark relationship between them because she's trying to manipulate him to keep her alive and not take her to London to be hanged. And he's just like, doesn't give enough. And, but there's also a secret tie between him and Priest. And so it's very interesting. But check your triggers because when I say this is dark, it is freaking dark. The things that Bennett has to go through in this book are so traumatizing and sad. And it's on page. So just be aware there is SA on page on here. So, just be aware to check your triggers, but I absolutely loved it. I was so moved by this romance. Okay, sorry if the lighting's bad in here, but it just got really dark because I'm filming kind of late. Um, but hopefully the lighting's okay. Um, so now we have number four, which is another Nikki Harris. This is the second book. It's part of a duet. I have the bind up of the duet, but this uh, the one that I'm talking about is Cosa Nostra which is the second part of the duet. This is the bind up of both of them. But this is the second book in the Kids of District series, the same as the His Pretty Little Burden. And this is Max Butcher and Cassidy's Romance. Max Butcher is the silent, broody, one word, grumpy kind of hero um, who is touch her and you freaking die. He's on my book boyfriend list. I love him so much. The first book, you may think, oh, he's just kind of an asshole, broody, grumpy. But the things that he does for his woman and how much he loves her and Cosa Nostra, I don't know what it was. 
but I literally bawled my eyes out near the end of Cosa Nostra because things happen when they're going to be separated and where Max finally shows his feelings because Max is a hero that doesn't show love through saying I love you. Like he doesn't really say it. He does it through his actions. And the way that he shows Cassidy how much he loves her, ugh, it was so freaking beautiful and it killed me. Um, Max Butcher is just so special. She was a ballerina, like kind of knew who he was, was obsessed with him. He didn't really know who she was, but once she got in his system, he couldn't like avoid her and deny her. Um, this is a duet, so you have to read our thing to read Cosa Nostra. But it's just such a fun series. It's set in Australia, and I thought that was so unique to have a mafia series in Australia. And I couldn't put it down. Nikki Harris's writing is amazing, and she's one of my favorite new to me authors that I discovered this year. Um, so I highly recommend this. Like I loved Max Butcher so much. Okay, so now we get to the top three books of 2023, and they are all from the same series. <laughs> this series means so much to me. I got these copies because they don't make this cover anymore because I really wanted them. So I got them on Mercari, and I'm so excited to have them. They are very thick. You have to read the first book. The first book I didn't include in my list because I gave it five stars, but it was still phenomenal. Like, honestly, you could combine it because the first two books are duet. The second two are also duet in the same series. So I kind of have them out of order a little bit from like what my favorites are. But basically, I have Saving Six as number three by Chloe Walsh. I have Redeeming Six as number two. And then my number one was Keeping 13. So really it's Binding 13, Keeping 13. That is Johnny and Shannon's romance. And then you have Saving Six and Redeeming Six. And that's Joey and Apha's romance. As you can see, these are thick. They are thick books. So that really like intimidated me and I didn't read them forever. Um, but I finally read them and I'm just telling you it's the best storytelling I've read in years. Chloe Walsh's writing is so amazing. She slowly introduces you to each character. Um, there's so much character development that you feel like these characters are real. Um, Joey from Redeeming Six and Saving Six means so much to me. He means more to me than like any character I've ever read. Now, I put didn't put his as the top one because he still moved me in Keeping 13. I still love these two, but I think Keeping 13 shocked me to my core. I never felt that emotional about a book before. And Joey just breaks my heart. I mean, this is a series. So in Keeping 13, which is my number one book, Sorry, these are falling all over. We have Johnny and Shannon, and Shannon comes from a severely abusive home. You need to check your triggers on these because she there's domestic abuse on page. Her father abuses her, um, her siblings, especially Joey, her older brother, who is the hero for this. And you see everything Joey goes in through in this. Like when I bawled in this book, it was from Joey's stuff. So even though he's a side character, he means he's a huge part of the story and means so much to you, even in the first two books. And Shannon falls for this star rugby player. He's very focused on his career of becoming a pro rugby player. He doesn't want a relationship. Um, and But he can't stay away from Shannon. And she was severely bullied throughout her previous school. So they finally put her in the special prep kind of school, the Tommen. And this is the Boys of Tommen series. And she basically, it's a very slow burn, you guys. There's no spice in this book. No spice. Um, slowly befriends Johnny. Johnny can't stop thinking about her, can't stop obsessing about her. He's totally infatuated with her. And he can't stay away. And so it's a slow burn, 
beautiful build of their romance, but at the same time, you're seeing everything that Shannon has to go through at home and hide and hide her bruises. And Joey gets beat. Joey has had to, you get more of Joey's story in his books, obviously, because um, in Saving Six, it goes all the way back to his first year. And when he may, met Afa, which is his girlfriend, and they are like true soulmates. Um, but he didn't pushed her away because he didn't want her to be subjected to his horrible home life and abuse. And he didn't think he was good enough. He has addiction issues because of everything he's been through. So there's major trigger warnings for domestic abuse, drug addiction, thoughts of suicide, all these kinds of things. So I'm just telling you that these books, that's just three of them, not all four. It's a lot, but it's so well done. Johnny's Best Friend, Gypsy, is the next book coming out this year in 2024. And I'm just telling you, I cannot freaking wait for it. Gypsy is like the sunshine, funny, comedic guy, but you know there's stuff going on under the surface. It is just, I can't tell you, I'll talk to my mom about these characters and start crying. Like Johnny's parents and how good they are and how they try to save this family and everything this family goes through. When the stuff happens in Keeping 13, big stuff goes down in this book. Um, and this is the second book. I lost it. Like I was listening to an audiobook and I was bawling hysterically while I was cooking. I had to stop. Um, I have a vlog of Finding 13 and Keeping 13 if you're interested. I'll try to remember to link it down below. I will be having a vlog soon of the Saving Six and Redeeming Six. Um, but they're hefty, but they are worth the hype, people. They moved me so much. I never stopped thinking about these characters and how much character development that Chloe Walsh put into this that it means they're like a part of you. And I know that sounds over the top, but they are. And I just it just shows that you don't need spice and books to create a beautiful love story and a beautiful romance and move the reader. So those had to be like my top three. If I could add Binding 13, I would. But this series was everything to me. It's the best books I've read in years. And I'm a huge fan of Chloe Walsh. I can't wait for the rest of the series to come out. Um, but those were my top, all my six stars, and then my top 10 for 2023. Let me know what your favorite romance was. And if you've read Boys of Tom in series yet, if not, please do. Um, thank you so much for watching this. It's been a great first year on BookTube for me. I really appreciate all the support. If you could remember to subscribe, like, comment, and I will see you now in the next one. Thank you.